Hello, my peeps. It is Tracy Stewart's Technology Challenged, uh, your local neighborhood paper pusher, coming to you li uh, live-ish um, through video. So yeah, I've given up on trying to figure out why the exact same thing that has worked every other time is no longer working tonight. <laughs> um, I just, I don't got it in me. <laughs> I was out. I had the best day. I'll just tell you, I had the best day. It started with what I originally was calling coffee and cards, but then realized I don't even drink coffee. It's not about the coffee because it's basic curing coffee. Tea now. I can tell you about tea. Um, but it was more about the cards and the company. So, and they're just getting away from it all. So I sort of rebranded it as midweek card escape. So I had mine this morning and I had one lovely lady. Um, I don't actually know if I should say her name on Facebook. I don't know how people are about that. I, I'm not going to. I will just tell you she was a lovely lady. And we had the best time sitting, drinking tea, chatting while she made her cards. And, oh, that's what it's about for me. I It was the best start. And then I've had a couple other things happen since that are good. And I made some plans and things are starting to go. And uh, my son is doing his grade 9 grad tomorrow. So it has been a busy day. But it's just been like all these good things just went out. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, I'm going to crash hard tonight. I know it's that and the heat. Um... But yeah, it was just such a good day. But as I was doing all of these things, the time just kept going and going. Um, I had a lovely, entertaining conversation with my nephew, um, which went longer. And all of a sudden I looked and thought, oh my goodness, I have to cook supper and do and do. So I didn't really have a plan for tonight. I'm going to move this out of the way. We all know it's Wednesday. Um, I'm going to move that out of the way, though, because while we're talking, I'm going to cut stuff so that I can have this video posted at some point tonight. Um, so... Every now and again, what you need to do when you have no idea what you need to do is just go sit at your desk, look at the things on your desk, or better yet, scroll through some stuff. So right now, for the month of June, there is a starter special, or starter kit special. So the starter kit at the best of times is a wickedly good deal. You get, generally, $165 in product. Right now, you can get $206 in product for $135 flat rate. There's no tax. There's no GST or shipping. It's $135. Uh, you also get a paper pumpkin kit, which is worth about $36. And you don't, you don't get to pick it. You just get one that's somewhat recent so that you're aware of the program and how it works. And um, You get some catalogs. Which a lot of people say, well, I don't want to do this as a business. It doesn't matter if you do it as a business or not. The catalogs are awesome to have, full of ideas. But you can also pass out the catalogs to your friends. Maybe eventually you might sell it. Or maybe you get them to buy a few things and you all get your stuff at a nice discount. Or you charge them the price and and um, you you get to get your stuff at cheaper. <laughs> like You never know. Um, might just be ideas. It might get them just interested enough to come to a class with you. Or like, who knows? There's always a use for the catalogs. Um, you get some business supplies and stuff, some envelopes. You use the envelopes to mail big things in. When it all is said and done, it's, you know, well, with the, with the new, with the increase, um, it's over $300 worth of stuff that you're getting. Like the value of three, uh, $300 worth of stuff. Did I just do two of the same color? No, I didn't. <laughs> so I am trying to pay attention, but... Um, and, and even with the regular one, it's like two something. So it is a huge amount of stuff you can pick. And the beauty of it is you can pick anything that's current. So the demos get to order early. So there's some new Christmas stuff that's coming out. And um, some of them we can order early. So you can order that with your starter kit. Like there's all sorts of things, right? It's a great deal. It's a great way to get craft supplies. But, and I've said it before, <laughs> the absolute best, 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 best um, thing about being a demo is the stamping community. The other demonstrators, as well as just the stampers. Now, when I sat down tonight, I, I looked at my stuff on my desk and I'm like, oh, that's right, I got a couple things to tell you. And then I thought, but I wanna make something. I don't wanna just tell you about stuff. Cause I mean, I, I do wanna tell you about stuff cause it's, you know, there's some good deals. I don't wanna deprive you of knowing about the good deals. But at the same time, <clears throat> I wanna talk about the fun stuff and do the fun things. So I, I needed I needed something. I needed inspiration <laughs> for a project. And I remember seeing something the other day when I was mindlessly scrolling. And so thankfully I found it quick today. 
um, some of the cutest little projects and some of the just genius ideas. So you don't have to think of everything. You don't have to know everything. Becoming a demonstrator gives you access to a whole bunch of demonstrator websites and pages and such things. And oh my goodness, the wealth of knowledge and talent that is out there. Oh, am I gonna do this? Do, do, do. Sorry, I'm 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 trying to decide. Is this the paper I want? Or I think I'm gonna go this way. I'm trying to multitask right now. So for me, multitasking generally means doing two things, neither one particularly well at the same time, as opposed to just doing one at a time and doing it well. So that's multitasking. Um yeah, so you, you just a wealth of stuff. So I remembered seeing this um, the other day, and I thought, oh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go look that up. So sure enough, here I am. Um, and usually when I see something, I don't ever make it exactly the same way. Um, I tend to just put my own spin on it, but it gives me a good idea, it gives me a, like a starting point. But the ones I'm making you tonight, um, I'm making almost identical. And and then one is a bit of a take on it, but. Um, the first two I'm going to show you are almost identical. They they were just so clever. Um, and the only, <laughs> the only reason I'm changing the one card is because I only partially unpacked all my stuff from this morning. And the color ink she used um, is in a box in the garage. <laughs> and I didn't have time to go dig through and grab it. So that's the reason for that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So can I do two things at once? Eh debatable can I do three things at once <laughs> okay so a couple a couple quick things I told you about the starter kit special that is all of June um, there's also the designer series paper special also all of June and I've said it many times I hate to pay tax I hate to pay shipping so getting 15% off on, on the designer paper I worked out the prices a pack of paper that is normally $17 when you add, and I always add shared shipping because generally, unless your order's enough to, you know, to cost the ten ninety five anyways, shared shipping's your best deal. So I put orders through frequently enough. We can generally get shared shipping on it. So I just run it through at eleven percent. Oops, as I drop everything. Um, so if you did that, and then GST, we have no choice. GST is just GST. So you pay the GST, it would come to um, like nineteen something. I don't know. I, ha I do have actually written down somewhere. So with this special, you don't pay, you pay less to begin with. So even when you do the, um, sorry, I lost my piece of paper, there we go. Even when you add on 11% shipping and then add on uh, the tax, the final total comes to like 16 something. So it, it saves you the cost of the tax, the cost of the shipping, and a couple extra cents depending on math and and the one the one package is a bit bigger so it's more expensive to begin with but but yeah so it saves you that so that's an awesome thing so if you want to get in on that stock up on your dsps there are some nice dsps man um whether or not we can continue will depend on whether or not i can find the die i just dropped on the floor okay i'm going to show you a secret i bought this magnet in like the education section at Dollarama or Dollar Tree something and it's I don't know so we're doing science experiments or school experiments or something but let's see if we can hear oh, oh, oh. you hear that click <laughs> that is the sound of the magnet finding the die that I dropped best dollar 25 you're ever gonna spend um and because I have like I don't know <laughs> weirdness but I keep it just kind of off to the side, tucked by the paper. It's nowhere near the computers or anything. Because for some reason, I'm like, is, is that an old school thing? Is that a new thing? Is that a wi old wives' tale that magnets will kill things that like technology? Because the Lord knows I don't need any more help with screwing up technology. But anyway, so I just kind of keep it off to the side. But yes, every now and again, I drop things on the floor. Um, and there's always bits and pieces of paper on the floor. Because that's how I craft. Um... And I refuse to sweep every single day, quite honestly. Um, once in a while, yes. Every single day, no. Uh, but also because I have a dog who's obsessed with paper. Uh, apparently it's hereditary. And he likes to um, shift through the recycle bin to get just the right piece of paper to take away and shred around and leave in a pile on the stairs. 
So he will pull things out of the recycle bin that are in his way so that he can get to the thing he wants. <laughs> yep, that's our dog. So yeah, there's always paper on the floor. So when you drop something this tiny, see, sometimes you wonder if you're ever going to see it again. Okay, I think I have finished die cutting. Isn't this the little mini so handy for so many reasons? One of them being not enough space on the desk. <laughs> and since I was just cutting tiny little things anyway. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus up now and here we go. So, yes, DSP sale, starter kit sale. Um, some of the information was in my last newsletter or you can always just uh, send me a message at any point. You know I love to talk about stamping. And, and uh and I'll tell you all the details if you want to get, let you know when the next group order is going in. Uh, oh, this is, we don't need this one quite yet. So this is the new kit that just got released and it is a horrible picture. Um, it's very faded, which I didn't realize until after I printed it. It's called Boho Beach. So the stamp set's quite easy to read. Just sit back and relax. That's probably something we all need. Um, it is the same kind of earthy tones as some of the end colors. Um, I love it. You get four each. These colors are, are speaking to me. Um, you get two designs for each, so eight cards total. And then you can kind of see the, the... But these ones here where they do this like fun marble effect, so it looks like sand and water. Oh, they're just genius. Anyways, that is the new kit that came out, in case anybody's wondering. Um, the next paper pumpkin... No, I'm going to do something else first. Oh, I'll tell you. Okay, the next paper pumpkin... <laughs> sometimes I can't decide. Um, the deadline is the 10th. So I'm going to show you, there's dies that have come out already for it. I'm going to show you something. So in, in a couple little, like, so, so clever projects with that. And then the last one that came out was a big hit, was this one called Exploring in Color. And I did, I don't know if I did it live or, or if I just did, um, showed you guys the pictures, but it made some of the coolest cards. Like these cards are awesome, right? And it's all about these fancy backgrounds and how nice and, you know, well, a lot of times with kits, people will say, yeah, but once you use all that up, then what? So the kits always come with um, an ink spot and a stamp set. And the answer is use the stamp set for other projects. So sometimes people do and sometimes they don't. And sometimes, like this lady today, whose name I wrote down so I would remember. Her name is Arlie Lascombe. And I think she's a demonstrator. She posted that one, happened to be on a non-demonstrator site, but just the way everything was posted, I got the impression she might be a demonstrator. Um, I don't know where she's from. She's from Genius Land. That's where she's from. So I'm gonna just very quickly show you the cards she made because I didn't have time to make it ahead of time. And it never works for me to try to show pictures on there. So in this kit, there's three, these are my little masks from when I did them before. I just stuck them to the thing so I could reuse them. Um, these three little images. And then there's this stamp set, which is, actually there's two stamp sets in here that are just like the best sentiments. This one says, life is meant for good friends and great adventures. Yes, it is. And this one says, it doesn't matter where you're going, it's who you have beside you. Yes, that's true. So anyway. Those are, <laughs> he's getting to me today. <laughs> I'm cracking myself up though. Okay, so those are the sentiments. So what this genius woman did, <laughs> um, and like I said, hers hers appeared to be all um, done in like the pebbled path, the dark gray, um, which is in the other room. What did I do with my card? There we go. So even, even if I'm making a plain white card base, I will admit, I like to put it on something else. Partially because if I screw up, I can just flip it over. But I just I just like the look of it. So this card is very simple. And I'm going to keep it as simple as she made it. Because it's simply genius. <laughs> I told you I'd crack myself up. Okay. Um, there's probably a good way to do this. And not and not have it all cockeyed. But that's not how I roll. So I'm just going to start stamping. So, like I said, hers was all one color. That color is outside. So... Uh, I'm going to do this, and because I'm going to use my brain tonight when I stamp, um, these are solid images, or fairly solid, at least the cup is, on photopolymer. So what's a very good idea? It's a little pierce mat to give it a little padding. These other ones are more line pictures, so it probably would matter, but on this cup, if I don't want to screw this up on my very first stamp, yeah, I should do this. 
Now, I think on her she might have like stamped these all one color, but then just kind of fussy cut and popped them up. But as much as I love to fussy cut, I know a lot of people don't. So I'm going to show you the non-fussy cut way. And I, when I think of these little enamel mugs, I think of them in this color. That's why I picked this color, because that's, I mean, you, I think you can get them any color, but that's the color I think of when I think of them, is this blue. And then this wild wheat is an awesome color, and it's it's magic. It um, it morphs depending on, you know, what you, uh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do, I'm going to do this the smarter way. I'm going to leave that one for now. And I'm going to do the bottom one first. Uh, anyways, this one, yeah, the color that you stamp it with tends to influence the way it turns out. It's an amazing color. Um, but I'm going to do the bottom one first because then I can center them better. That's a good trick. Because um, if I stamp the next one and then I stamp the other one and I have to feed too far, they'd all be offset. But because I've stamped the first one, and now I'm going to try to get the bottom of this boot the same distance from the bottom as this cup is from the top. Does that make sense when that came out? That bit, yeah. And again, we're eyeballing. Oh, I love it. My boots almost looked just like that. The ones that I, I found a pair I liked and every year I just, anytime I needed new boots, I saw, bought the same boots. <laughs> I had several pairs of them. Hand wags. I even remember the name. Okay, those are not exactly the same spacing, but they're pretty close. And then I'm just going to put our little compass, which I'm doing in this color because I think of like an antique gold compass. Because that would just be cool. And I'm just going to pop him in the middle on a jaunty angle because that's how I roll. And yep, I stuck my finger in the end. <laughs> okay, these are all different shapes. So how to line them up, I don't know. I'm thinking the trick will be to do a better job on um, the words and then they will all come together. Okay, let's just line things. Now, I'm gonna show you a trick and I'm gonna hope it works, but come to think of it, I never actually thought this out as far as what color I was going to do the lettering. I just decided I wanted to do the images three different colors instead of one. Oh yeah, just, just rolling with it, you know, whatever the plan is. You know what, I'm going to go back and I'm going to live on the edge and I'm going to do all of the words in their own color. So what she did is she took this stamp with its three lines. These stickies I have been hoarding uh, because I absolutely love this little case. I got this at an event. I don't know, 10 years ago? You can you can tell by the end colors how many years ago it was. But I love stickies. And look at this. This is like the most clever sticky thing. But I finally decided, you know what? <laughs> use the damn things. So I'm using them. Okay. I'm going to use this one. Now for the, so for the top and the bottom are the easy ones. The middle one's the one where I'm going to have to double mask. And that one gets a little trickier, but, um, so for this one, I don't actually need that yet. I want, it doesn't matter. So because this is photopolymer, I can actually see what I'm doing and I'm just going to go and I'm going to stamp on the edge and I'm going to make sure I ink up just the top line. There we go. Now these lines are all, oh, Darn it! Coming after these stamp. And you don't know why yet because I, maybe I should have stamped the words first, but I did not leave enough room for this line to fit on this boot. No, I don't want to restamp. Let me see what I can do. Nope, never mind. New plan. Um, hey, here's the insight into how Tracy generally crafts. New plan. And then in the end, I'll be just like, well, that's exactly what I meant to do. Um, okay, so this, this sentiment is too long, and until I said it out loud of, you got to figure out how you're going to space them. Like, do you want to like left justify center, right? You know, when you put them in there, um, that's when it occurred to me that I had to make sure I left enough room for the boot, which I didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this just below the boot, which means I'm going to stamp each one of them just kind of below their image. So it looks like, like I did it on purpose and I'm just going to try to center them. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> that's our message for crafting. It doesn't matter. So you see what I mean? Here's my image just below. Here's my image. This one will be just below. And I might trim this paper afterwards because now it's going to be way out of whack. But this one and then this one, I will have room if I go just below the boot. So that's what I'm going to end up doing. Now in between, I'm going to wash this off <laughs> because 
gonna make a mess. And then I'm gonna do the same thing I did the last time, and I'm gonna save the middle one for last. <laughs> partially because it's hardest, but partially because um, this is easier to clean the stamps up with these ones. So, so I'm doing the same thing. I'm just looking at where the edge of the stamp thing goes, stamp pad goes, stamp thing. That's helpful. And then. And you can tell right away when you hit it. You can't see it on camera so much. But I can tell that I have hit most of them. Now the trick with this one is there's B's and D's on the line I want. So they stick up a little bit more. The line above happens to have Y's and G's, which hang down. So I'm trying to get one without getting the other. And it looks like I did. You'll know soon enough if you didn't because it will be, uh, you'll screw up your card. But I can actually tell by looking. Oh yeah, you can sort of see that I've, I've managed to keep that middle line clear. Now, if you talk a lot, like like somebody you know, um, you can always just like give your stamp a little breath and it sort of kind of re-moistens it so you can make sure you're gonna get a nice good stamp. Oh, that is awesome. Okay, I'm gonna wash this one. <laughs> the reason I say it's awesome, it's not, I, well, you know, yay me, but um, sometimes I find that with the really fine lettering, if you aren't, like if you're, whoo, like I am right now, um, then you can make it smudge because it's just, it's fine. But so far I have not done that. So yeah, yay me. Okay, I picked the wrong size. I totally picked the wrong size. I forgot what I was, what I was masking and I totally picked the wrong size. So I'm going to put that one back because waste not, want not. Stickies are precious, but I need two of these kind is what I need. Now, <laughs> I mean, I've probably told the story before because every time I do this, I think of it. But um, when I tried this the first time, I was watching somebody and they and so if you want to if you want to stamp um, just certain things, the easier way, I guess, is to just use your marker and just color the line that you want. But I find when you use the marker, it's not as saturated as when you stamp. So I like to try the harder method <laughs> because I like the result better. <clears throat> but I had seen this. So the first time I saw this, somebody said, just mask off the part you don't want. So, and so that way you only ink up the part that you do. So I thought, well, this is great. These are not the right stickies. Wow. Darn it. <laughs> Stick that in there again. I need ones that are more sticky on more spots. Okay. So anyways, it said to mask out so you're only inking up the part you want. So with the sticky part, so it works properly, I'm going to cover the top line. And I will use these stickies for other things and mask with them and stuff because it seems like a lot at this point to, to do this, but the end result is what we're going for. Seriously, what is going on tonight? Okay, that's not working for me either. Last try. Um, and what I probably should have gone with to begin with, because now that um, <clears throat> Stampin' Up! has masking paper, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it is so much better than the sticky notes. I just sometimes forget I have it. There we go. Okay. And this stuff is definitely, you can reuse this. And, but I'm just going to cut two strips off. And I'm cutting the strips a little bit longer, and you'll see why in a minute, because otherwise I'll be wearing this before I'm done. So we're going to peel off the back. This is the most genius part Stampin' Up! did. Instead of making this a solid piece on the back, there's these little breaks in the the back coating thingy. <laughs> That's a technical term. And uh, so it makes it easy to get this thing off, which is genius. Okay, so <laughs> pick the straightest edge that you can find and cover the part you don't want. And in general, this is much easier than I am making it look. Okay, and then we're going to take the other one. And we're going to cover this part. And again, we're watching for the, the G's in this stuff. But um, the other beauty of markers is if you miss just a touch, you could use your marker to like, kind of touch it up. But I think I actually managed to do this. It's more important to make sure you don't pick up anything you don't want than it is to get maybe a little bit light in one spot. Because light you can fix. But if you pick up the row below, then you're trying to figure out how to hide it. 
Okay, so <clears throat> I've masked off just the part I want. Now, and I'm st because I have to take these off and because I don't want to waste ink, um, I am going to try not to just like jam it in the middle of the ink pad, which I could do, but I'm going to try not to. But I still want, this will keep me, this will keep me from getting too much ink where I don't want it. And I'm going to try to get just the where you're going part. Now, when I did this the first time, I was like, oh, sweet, look at that. I, I got us perfect. And I went like this and I stamped on my card. Can you imagine what it looked like? <laughs> so here's the critical part of this, of this technique. I'm going to move this so I sort of put these. Stamp. And then before, or like ink it up, before you stamp it down, make sure you take the stickies off. Because <laughs> if not, all you're going to do is put a big gob of ink on your paper. Okay. And then this is going to go so low. Oh. Oh, damn, it works so well. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. That's from a movie. I don't even remember which one. Okay, so other than the fact that I screwed it up, and so my top is a little wonky now. Look at that card. That's all she did. She did that, and then she just, hers was mounted on a bigger card, but. So what I'm gonna do, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? And <laughs> she stares at the thing and makes up. So what, um, who did I say? The genius Arlene Luscombe had done, um, was she had used a bit of the, twine that came with the kit and she put a bow on the compass but what I'm gonna do because I screwed it up and I need to sort of I just did it again I need to kind of mask my mistake a little bit I'm just gonna put some twine around the top and see if that works but yes, this could be just a simple card. If it wasn't me trying to recreate it, it could be a simple card. Um, and you probably, could, you probably could get away with it just putting it like this on the card base. And it says, it doesn't matter where you're going, it's who you have beside you. Ain't that the truth? But let's just see here. Um, it's, it's funny, I'm hot and because I was outside a bunch today and this weather's just ridiculous. And busy and I'm a winter person, so I rarely complain about things in the winter. I complain constantly in the summer. As long as I don't do both, I figure I'm okay. But oh, yes, I am a winter person. I am not a summer person. Um, anyways, I'm tired. And so things are hysterically funny to me. And for some reason, when I get tired, uh, I tend to swear more too. And I'm really trying not to swear. So it's very tasking. Okay, I need to just shift this down a little bit. Because then I can use... Um, you know one of those super good tools that everybody has to brace this again so I can tie it that would be your chest um, because I'm holding it because it wants to slide but in this case I'm not gonna get too fancy because again I tried to start this as a simple card you're gonna think does Tracy not know what simple means she does she's just not very good at it Keep moving my scissors somewhere else. Do, do, do. Yeah, doesn't work for me. Um, I am just going to go with uh, it being slightly off, honestly, because that's better than uh, that other step, which I did not like. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with deciding on your own that you don't like something and just changing it as you go. Um, and I'm just going to use the same piece of twine. You can waste not want not theory. Ooh, look at that. I'm surprised I did that that quickly. I'll just go over on this end because I can probably get two bows out of this piece. And we'll just go back to the original plan. Seriously, every time I tie a bow, this is what I get. <laughs> this is why when I say you got to tie it and then you kind of have to futz with it and get it like, yeah, because never are they even remotely the same. And then I, I like some little tails on there. Give it a haircut. My pokey tool somewhere. Yes, it is. And then I'm just going to roll up a little glue dot so that I can hide it underneath that bow on said compass. Do, 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 do. 
I could have tied it if I had, if the cup was the other way I would have like actually tied it up here to try to fill in the top of it. Um, yeah, those are too long. <laughs> I like them long, but that's just too long. But yes, it makes tying it around something makes sense. I guess I could have made it shoe like oh you know what? Oh. Let's see if I can do this without destroying what's underneath it. Oh my god, yes! I'm going with boot laces instead. Oh. That was just like a last minute. Oh my goodness, I love that. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, look at that. That's so adorable. Okay. <laughs> so there's the card. Is that not just genius? It's genius. Arlene Lascombe, thank you for that. You totally made my day when I saw it. And thanks to you, I'm sharing it with the others. Okay. I'm also going to... Because I put, and this is how my logic works, it does not mean it is at all correct, but because I put the bow on the boot of the three different thingamajiggies, uh, images, I'm going to focus on the boot. <laughs> so I'm going to stamp a boot on the envelope, and I'm going to stamp a boot, a boot on the inside of the card. Oh my goodness, I just love this card. Okay, that's one. <laughs> I don't actually remember when I started. There's a really good chance I'm rambling tonight, so hang in there with me. Uh, I prepped the other stuff, so hopefully, hopefully it will go faster. So the other one, um, one of the demos had made. They looked like almost like gift card holder size. Like I think they were just custom sized cards. And I mean, at any point, you can make whatever size card you want. If you just want to throw a little note in with some stuff, make them. I made cards the one time that were. Two by two and a half, I think. They were just like little guys. And you could just like pop them on desks and stuff. Put them in a with a gift or baking or oh, they were so cute. And they were so much fun to make these tiny little cards. I'm gonna use note cards because if all else fails, you could mail a note card. Um, so that that's good if you need to be able to mail them. Okay, so the other lady, what did I just do with my stamp set? Oh, <laughs> this is a big huge box right in front of me, you mean? Um, the other lady, I don't know, actually know what stamp set she used. And her name, because I, uh, have forgotten it already. Oh, every time I turn this on, it goes somewhere else. I'm pretty sure it was Kim McGillis. Let me get back to the page, because it keeps kicking me out of where I was. She made a few cards. So the next paper pumpkin that comes out is called Welcome In. And I'm looking forward to this, because get some good welcome sentiments out of it. So in the in the all the promo stuff, it said it coordinates with the Country Inn Suite, which is these awesome blue papers, like just gorgeous papers, and the Countryside dies, which are the these ones, and it had a set of add-on dies that came with it, which you can see in the picture of these little dies. So this you have till the tenth to order this kit. The kit is not even out yet. So this lovely lady, um, Kim, I, 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 it's. Kelly McGillis is an actress, right? She's the one from Top Gun. So now, in my head, I'm like, does she have the same name as her, or is it different? And now I can't remember the right name. It is Kim. Kelly's the actress. Kim's the demo. And her cards are adorable. So she said, while well, we're waiting, because everybody impatiently waits for the next thing you're expecting <laughs> when it comes to stamping. You're like, more, more. She said she made some stuff with just the dies, like, to get ahead of time. And some of them, oh, they're just adorable. So I will show you, though. This is one of the images that one of the promo images that came with the kit. And in addition to all the blues that are in that paper that are also in this kit, there is Calypso Coral, something else that I forgot now, uh, Daffodil Delight, Old Olive. So there's some other colors. So the entire kit is not blue. But look at how fun these are. And this looks like a die cut with a pre-stamped image that you could put a sentiment on or that you could punch this out or there's, maybe there's die cut vases. It's going to be a fun kit nonetheless. So you have till the 10th if you want one of those. In the meantime, though, I have already ordered the dies and received them. Um, the add-ons you can usually order right away. You don't have to wait till the 10th. I'm shocked these haven't sold out, especially once people started getting them and saw how cute they were. Um, they come in this tiny little container. So there's a vase, there's a leaf, and there's a flower. Oops. They're adorable, right? So these ones you can use, sort of like use this with parts of the kit or do different things like this one it looks like in the picture 
they took the flower label and die cut out the center of this like pre-stamped image and made this separate little thing here right and there's nobody says you have to make the kit the way you want so this lady made a couple cards little cards so i'm putting them on note cards hers like I said were probably a different size and i have no idea what stamp set she used it just had a little sentiment so this card is it's it's all about little little miniatures right now so this is one of the stamp the stamp sets i got and i love it because of these big <laughs> sentiments so yes, I just said it's all about the miniatures. But nonetheless, this stamp set also has all these tiny little sentiments. And they're meant to like pair together, right? Thank you. You're all kinds of amazing. Happy birthday. Let's pop some bubbly. Confetti and happy, right? With all my heart, sending hugs and love when words aren't enough. They go, they go together nicely. But I think some of these on their own are fun. So I'm going to make a card that says, you're all kinds of amazing with this tiny little font and these tiny little flowers. And no, I did not plan ahead to have an extra block for this. Let me see. Okay. So what she did on her card, and for the most part, with the exception of the sentiment, because hers said happy birthday on it. And I do have a stamp set that has a really tiny little happy birthday in it, but that was too taxing to try to remember which one that was. So what she did was she took her card and she also added a layer. Got to love that, right? Um, so one of the things I've done, a little Tracy's tip for you, is I have this pre-cut stack of white paper uh, and it's just the basic white cardstock and it is cut to go on a note card. And I keep it with my note cards and it has just a skinny little release. So you can start with it this way. And then if you want to have like a bit wider border, which is what I tend to prefer, like see this one, the border is wider, then you can just trim it. But right now they're set for this. Now, because I'm actually going to use my noggin, I'm not going to cut it until I double check and make sure that it's a good idea. To... Actually, I think I'm going to leave it the way it is just because of the size of these. I think it will look better. The other one, I think will be too short. So, and her, and seriously, her card is like white on white on with a little bit of blue. So anyways, I have this pre-cut stack. The note cards, I believe, are three and a half by five and a half. Let's see how good my memory is. Three and a half by five. I was close. So these should be three and a quarter by four and three quarters. Yes, they are. So yeah, they're just a bit smaller, but I have this whole stack of them. So they come in quite handy when I'm making note cards because it's pre-cut. Okay. Oops, here, let's do it. Ah, yeah, let's do it this way. So I'm just going to put a dimensional, which I took out. And lost on my desk somewhere already seriously oh there we go um another tip for you as i go oh i'm just full of things this evening um i find if you put one big dimensional in the middle of something like a small piece i realize now this is like white on white you can't even see what i'm doing just a minute i'm gonna use my scrap um i find that if you put them on these are little squares these are the little stitched squares but have it there oh seriously with technology anyway stitch squares um i find if you put one dimensional in the middle they twist whether it's while you're using it or after or even just lining them up i find that they they twist so i like to even on small stuff put two because two will anchor it and keep them straight so instead of one big one the little pieces along the edge are basically one big one cut in half i'm just putting two half pieces on so instead of a big one in the middle, I put two. And that will keep it from going all, here's one of my favorite words, kitty wumpus, on you. There we go. Okay, so now you've seen what I'm doing. Now I do have to move this because I'm, I'm not putting the blue paper on. Um, again, I put them away. So I was having this discussion earlier today with somebody about dimensionals. Um, I would rather pay the extra postage and put as many layers of dimensionals as I want on my card than restrict myself to the width of the um, of the mailing slot. Now, I don't know if two sets of these are too much. I, could, I can find out. I do have the little like thing you can slide your card through to find out if it'll go through regular postage or not. Um, at the current moment, I'm not sure where it is, but I do have it. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Okay. Kids, don't do this at home. <laughs> you'll, then you'll blame me for, for messing up your project. 
Okay, so I'm just going to temporarily save my little dimensional over there. Uh, I meant to stamp this, and I didn't. So I have taken all but one, like, or left all but the one corner I'm going to stamp in. I've left all those dimensionals on. And I'm going to stamp it anyways, because that's how I roll. Okay, so I've buried my, there we go, I've buried my center. Okay, so this may or may not work, but before I attach anything else, I'm going to try this absurd idea. Because if it doesn't work, then I can make a new layer and not have to recut everything. So here's my You're All Kinds of Amazing. And I want to just put this down in the corner. And because all the other dimensionals are far enough away, I figure I'm okay. Oh, and I am. And I tell you, <laughs> I'm as okay as I ever get. Look at how, I can't see what I'm doing anymore. I put it right in front of my face. Look at how fine. Oh, that is just an awesome stamp. Okay. It worked. Now, there we go. I'm just going to take my little dimensional and without making a big crease in my card, I'm just going to pop it right back in there and pretend like I didn't screw up the beginning. Okay, so I've made my little layer with my little sentiments. And then I have these three to go. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my glue dots. And this is how I like to use glue dots. I expose the glue dots, so there's three of them. I stick my little pieces on it. And then these are meant to be ombre. And then I can just pop them off. And then I don't need any special tools or any fancy anything. I do need to be able to line them up properly. And yeah, you can just pop them right off. Um, if it's a, you can do that with sequins, I mean, all sorts of things. Um, and if you want to be sure that you're not going to like bend it, I kind of just take them and I kind of give them a bit of a pull. This is slippery. It's meant to, for the dots to come off. The paper is not. So this is what's going to win the fight generally. So I do this. This is actually the order they go in if we're going all ombre. <clears throat> I actually cleaned. I'm getting ready for our sale in a couple weeks where we're selling off our retired product. <clears throat> yeah, that seems like a good one. Oh, actually, you know what? I might put you... Okay, her card was all just like blue and white, but I think I'm going to add these little yellow ones on because this lemon lolly is such a nice color. Oh, I love it. Um, anyways, yes, getting ready for the sale. So I actually went through all of the old embellishments and cleaned them up, and I now have my current ones in one spot. Oh, yes, this little bit of yellow. Yellow, blue, and white is one of my favorite combinations. And this little tiny yellow center... See, it's rare I can actually ever just copy somebody. Um, but it is a genius idea, and it is not my genius idea. So, Kim McGillis, credit to you. I just, you know, I just chasey fied it a little bit. I'm going to try to move this out of my way. So this is what she made on her card. And I'm going to be smart about it, and I'm going to try it this way this time. I'm going to put the center one in the center. <laughs> Imagine that. A different way when I for some reason when I look at this it makes me think of Texas um, it's not exactly the shape of Texas it's just got like two elements that are the same but it makes me think of Texas so I can't unsee that I'm gonna turn it sideways so then oh I didn't put I didn't okay the flowers are all gonna be different I didn't put them all exactly square so that's fine so I'm gonna put this dude here in the middle I took the pieces off yet and then this guy so yeah either put the two outside ones and then center the middle or if you can in this case it was easier to center or center the middle one and then use that for the spacing to get them all equal so I have boho blue boho blue misty moonlight a little closer than I wanted, and Night of Navy. And it gives like a bit of an ombre effect. How cute is that card? Minus the fact that when I put this down at the very end, I made it slightly crooked. Is that not amazing? It's all kind of amazing. Isn't it adorable? So, and that's just the dyes and some paper <laughs> and some cute little flowers. Now, the only problem with doing this is I don't actually have <clears throat> the stamp set that gives me these flowers so that I can like stamp the inside. 
<clears throat> I'm sure I have a flower somewhere that will work, but I love, 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 love this card. So there's another one for you. And then, we'll buried things here. One of the other things she did, and uh, this one I don't think I need actually to put a layer on. There's another. I'm trying to not forget envelopes, so I've got myself in the habit of as soon as I get my like my card ready, I put the envelope with me because then I won't forget to stamp it. Uh, the number of times I've cleaned off my stamps, put everything away, looked at the envelope and went, mm, and pulled everything back out again and re-stamped and re-washed and re-put away. I'm trying to get smarter. Okay, these are not scored 100% straight. Um, and this cardstock is a little bit thicker, so I'm going to hold it down as best I can. <clears throat> and that improved it quite a bit, but here's the other trick. This is highly technical. So <clears throat> they were off quite a bit. Now they're just off. You can't quite see, but maybe 1 16th. So in order to avoid seeing this, yeah, <laughs> just put it backwards. Nobody will ever notice. You really only notice them when it's this way because you look at the front of the card. But once it's open like this, nobody ever lines it up and compares it. So if they're, if they're scored slightly off, put the overhang on the front. And actually, this one's going to go this way. Doop, doop. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> so again, she just... <laughs> Seriously, the numbers... I've kicked myself out again. I'm not going back in. Um, so she just used this. She made the flowery vase. Now, I'm not sure if I like the flowery vase, so we'll have to see once we do it. And I can't actually remember now if she had it lifted up on something. But you know me. I like to... I like layers. And she just had the same thing. She just had a little sentiment in the bottom. What did I do with that stamp set? There it is. So I'm going to put Sending Hugs and Love. And this is another one of those ones where I'm just going to use the part of the sentiment that I want. I'm going to try it in the lighter color. I brought both colors out. I might as well try them both. So look at me. This time before I add a whole bunch of things, I'm actually going to stamp the sentiment. So I'm doing the same thing again. I just want the top half of the sentiment. And in this case, they must know that people might only be using them because this stamp, um, the lines are farther apart, like considerably farther apart than they are on that other stamp, <laughs> which makes it way easier. So I'm going to put, actually I'm going to put it in the middle. This is a lighter color. That's what worries me is if it's going to show up in the thing. We're about to find out. Yes, it will. So that just says sending hugs and love. And I put it just in the middle of the card. Right down there. And then I always have die cuts. So I had this little die cut. So I just wanted to lift it up. Um, see, now I'm curious what she could have done. So I got to go back to, I don't know why I keep, every time I move, I, I get kicked out of the screen. I think she may have put DFP behind hers. Nope, she just put, um, she had like another full layer. But I like the idea of this little piece. <laughs> you can't see me looking around, but right now I'm like, what did I do with the dimensionals now? There we go, found them again. So <clears throat> I'm going to load this guy up with some dimensionals. And I'm going to center him. So instead of having the full sheet, and she had twine on hers too, but I'm going to do like wrapped around the full sheet, but um, I want less twine. Oh, look at how well I did that. Well done, Tracy. Um, so I wanted to center the words so that they would be centered under this piece. And when I center this piece, I actually did pretty good lining them up. So there we go. Now the question is, do we want a flowery vase? Which now that I look at it, yes, we do. Because the other one is just kind of a stripey vase, but oh, look how pretty that is. So that's, I think that's similar to what she had done. And then in this case, I made all the flowers the same color. But you know what? I really like the yellow. Do I want yellow centers in these? No, because this one's already got a few colors on it. Do I have darker blue? Let's see what I got. Or, no, in this case, I'm going to go with the shiny ones. These, these uh, embellishments are beautiful. They're the same color, but just because of the way they are, they will show up a little bit darker. Um, 
in this case, I was just deciding what I'm going to do. Um, because all I did was look at a picture. I have no idea what she actually did with hers, but um, sometimes I can tell. In this case, I'm not 100% sure. I think she put her, her vase on dimensionals and glued her her little like greenery down. Her greenery, which is blue. Do you call it a bluery? I don't know. Um, but I'm going to put the vase down and I'm going to pop up the flowers. So, and because these are like the big dimensionals, I got the little ones too. Turn those over because die cuts have a, a nicer side to them when they're like the side that's up when you cut it gives it a little bit nicer edge to it. So, in now in this case, I know I said it on the other one to put two, but in this case, because of the size of these flowers, one covers most of the flowers. So I find that this one works better. But if it was a bigger piece, yes, I would have split these. So now I have three flowers that are going to go in this vase, and I have three little bits of leaf which I did make green instead of blue because I thought I'm going to try and see what they'll like. Now I guess you could, these are, I guess you could just put the flowers, but I want to space it out a little bit. So I am dry fitting, um, which is a construction term, but works for this too. So without pulling off any of the backings off the adhesive, I'm just figuring out where do I want these. And I like things to go different directions. Some things I like to be even, but when it comes to greenery, I like them to go different ways. So I, and I, but I still like things in threes. So in this case, I am actually gonna make this one set of leaves go down. So this is how I've decided I want it. So I'm going to leave the greenery as much as possible, like the actual green leaves, and just move the flowers. Because they're all going to be covered up, I'm just gonna use my favorite no nope, actually I'm not because there is a couple little spaces there I'm gonna use blue dots um, and really because these are underneath the flowers they're not really gonna go anywhere so I'm folding these blue dots in half just giving it a little flip so it doesn't stick to my little thing and then one by one so I don't have to completely reset everything I'm just putting a glue dot behind the biggest leaf on this little frond and this one I know I wanted to have sticking off the edge a bit. So this one is sticking off the edge. And I kind of just look where I had them and I'm kind of putting the glue dot on without 100% losing track. Now it's not going to be exact, but I got a rough idea of where they go. In cases like this, it's easy. Just look where it shows up on the DSP. And so, and I'm using, like I said, the biggest leaf is the one here and my little folded in half glue dot is the perfect size for it. And if it's sticking out a little bit, it's not going to matter because probably going to be covered by something but um, you can just kind of push them around a little bit to get them out there so I've got this one here and then I do it again <laughs> just because I know it'd be easy <clears throat> yeah there we go so I'll put those down and then now I'll, I'll just stick these one at a time and if I would quit flicking the card the other flower would stay in place That guy there, that guy there, and this dude goes here. A little close together there, but there we go. Perfect. So I got my three little flowers and my little dude, and then I'm just gonna pop one of these at the smallest version into the center of each flower. The other two sides, I like to put like one of each size and stuff, but the other sizes are way too big. This is borderline too big, but let's pretend it's a Gerber daisy and it's got some nice big center to it. <gasps> These are such cool embellishments, I gotta tell you. All right. Let's move that out of my way. And look at this card. How cute is that? So these two were Kim McGillis using this little add-on set of dies and just whatever stamp set you happen to have um, they come with the paper pumpkin this set of dies is 825 plus shipping and tax in case you're wondering and we'll coordinate with the kit which we don't have yet the, the, you, you have to sign up by the 10th they finalize everything by the 12th and they start shipping so usually within you know depending what day of the week the 12th is the 12th is a Friday so Chances are they ship Monday, so I'll have them like the Wednesday, Thursday afterwards. Unless every now and again, 
something happens at the border and they get held up. But for the most part, they come pretty quickly. So I probably have till the 15th to wait. But in the meantime, look what you can do with just the dies. So thank you, Kim McGillis. Those are awesome. And then again, last month's Paper Pumpkin. Absolutely love this card. And this was Arlene Lescombe. So you don't have to think of everything. The demo community has got your back. When you are blocked or just in a rush and can't stop to focus long enough to come up with an idea, um, look at the amazing things you can just find on the demo sites. <laughs> right? And not just the demo sites, because the stampers in general, oh my goodness, the stuff that, um, that people post, the amazing projects they post and share. And actually, Kim McGillis did make a couple other ones. She made one with... Um, just like flagging little pieces of the DFP and making like a banner with it. There's another one. I don't remember the other one. And Lord knows I'm not going to try to find it again. But look at these cards. And if you did this without the rambling that accompanies them when I do them, um, these are three pretty quick cards. And I love them. <laughs> so thank you, fellow demos. Uh, thank you guys all for hanging in there. Because if you're watching this now, that means you waited for me to try to figure out technology. Um, with any luck, the Zoom was not actually broadcasting anything when I was swearing at my computer um, and then gave up and have now recorded and posted this. So if you're watching this, especially if you're watching this Wednesday night, thanks for hanging in there. Um, any questions, let me know. Want to get in on any group orders, any of these other deals, let me know. You want a paper pumpkin, let me know. Anything you want to know, let me know. You just want to talk about stamping, feel free. Let's talk about stamping. Um, I am going to be helping out again with Wildfire. Um, this weekend. So I'm going to pre-record something tomorrow to do for Friday. So I won't be live Friday, but there will be something Friday. And because I'm not trying to go live, that means it will probably go better. Um, but I will have something for you for Friday. And then yes, I should be back live next week. And I will have usual tidbits and such in between. So thank you all for joining me. Um, that is What's Up Wednesday. <laughs> and uh, have a great night, everybody. Thanks.